Listo. Voy a bajar y volver a Si no se va a escuchar. Ok. Ok. So, let's start. So, today I'm, I'm going to talk about the use of oscilloscopes, uh, particularly to do signal integrity and, and how to decode a signal. Ok. That's the idea. So, my name is Jesús Rodríguez. I work for Tektronics. I'm responsible for the support of those of those platforms. And, and the idea of this conversation is to talk on the fundamentals of the oscilloscope. So let's try to justify why to use the oscilloscope. And in the second part, it's some, some testings. So as you can see, I have an oscilloscope with me. So the idea is that, that we are gonna see on the screen how to control the oscilloscope and how to decode a, a serial bus. Okay, so let's start. When we try to use an oscilloscope, the oscilloscope will show you the way, how the waveform looks like, okay? So the waveform is the, the visualization mm -hmm. of the signal versus time, okay? As an example, if you create in a signal generator a, a waveform that it could be like a sine waveform, no? How, how does the signal look like? It's a sine wave. Right? So the oscilloscope will show you how the signal changes versus the time. If there are some noises, the instrument will detect that. Okay. So the idea of the oscilloscope is to show in a in a graph, no, how the signal changes versus time. Is voltage versus time. Time, no. Then the idea of the oscilloscope is to validate if there are some noises on the signal. Okay, on this on this example, there is a digital signal, and what you expect from a digital signal it's a low voltage and a high voltage, just to differentiate between a zero and a one. Okay, a low or a high. If you are sending some commands. At the end, you are sending instructions to enable a system, to start a system. But when you are working on electronic devices, it's more than that. You are sending messages in a specific language. That language is an electronic message, electronic language. It could be I square C, CAN, SPI, USB, Ethernet, no? There are different types of languages in an electronic device. The reason to have different languages is to assemble different devices coming from different providers, but at the end, to create like a whole system is to talk in the same language. So there are some languages for automotive applications, there are others for com computer applications, or just to get a connection to the peripherals. As an example, just in a microwave, oven, no? Or in a washing machine, there is a controller in a washing machine, for example, to measure the, the pressure, the weight, the speed of the motor, no? To check if the temperature of the water is hot or, or, or not, no, or cold. So at the end, there are different types of sensors, but there would be a computer talking with the different peripherals. And it could be a monitor or a display or some yeah. buttons, no? At the, end, at the end, there should be some inputs and outputs. And the idea of the oscilloscope is to visual, visualize all the signals that are coming no, from the electronic devices. No. And at the end, if there are some noises to detect from the, from where they are coming, okay, to try to reduce those signals with some aberrations that will affect the, the communication in between two devices, 
the transmitter and the receiver, okay? So when you are using an oscilloscope, the oscilloscope, the idea is to capture how the, the noises will affect the signal versus time and versus amplitude. Okay, so if you are talking about the timing, it means that the signal should arrive on the correct time or maybe late. So think about this. What about the use of a, a, a car, no, an automotive? And, and what's going to happen if you push the brake? The reason for that is you want to stop the vehicle, no? But there should be some priorities. Maybe you are at the same time trying to do some adjustment to the volume, to, 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 to better, uh, to, to hear your music, no? But at the same time, you are pushing to the brake. So which of those devices has more priority versus the other? Your, your, your goal is to stop the car, no? Otherwise, you are going to, to hit something on, on your road. So what I want to say is, there are some priorities on the communication in between the different peripherals that you have on that network, okay? If some of the signals get late, maybe the effect is going to be worse than the other, no? In this case, your security versus your comfort, not to listen to the music, okay? That's the reason why the idea of the oscilloscope is to evaluate how the signal is changing, if there are some noises, and if the noises, for example, in terms, in terms of the time, will affect if those actions get on or, or instructions get on the correct time, also in the amplitude. In terms of the amplitude, it, it could be to avoid this, the generation of wrong messages. For example, maybe there are some noises that you could identify as a one, but that could be just noise. Okay? So, at the end, signal integrity is the evaluation of your waveform to check that there are no, there are no noises on that environment. Okay, that's the idea. Okay, so my question would be, what could be the reason that your signal will will be affected? No, which which components could be the ones that will affect your signal? Okay, so the reason to get some deviation, some noises on your device is particularly because the connections, the speed of your signal, some topics like EMI, EMC, noises, crosstalk, not coming from the crosstalk of other devices. So let's try to, to, to describe this as an example. When you are talking with low speed signals, as an example, it could be an I square C, the voltage level of that signal could be five volts in an RS232, could reach up to 12 and up to 40 volts, no? But in high speed signals, the voltage level is going to be less than that, maybe three volts, five volts. So as much as the, as the speed gets higher, the voltage level will be reduced. Then the noise can affect much more to your signal. The noises can create some, some, some ground values as a zero or as a one, as a low or high value, okay? Then, if you are working with high speed signals, your transmission lane is going to act as an active device. Then there should be some inductance and capacitance effects. Then there would be like some deviation on your, on your signal. An effect like an, a capacitor, no? Like a waveform that is like a capacitor char charging or discharging. So there are some noises also. If there are some components that maybe there is like a connection, connector, or yours as a solder point, those unions should create conflicts because the signal that is trying to get it uh, to the next, uh, to the far end, 
¿no? The signal, the 100% of the signal will not get to the, to the destination. Maybe just the 90% of the signal will get to the destination, but the other 10% will act as a reflection, okay? And the reason for that, there will be like the creation of some echoes, and it's because of some differences in the impedance of the transmission layer, okay? Saying that, the connections, the, the solder points, um, also the, the transmission lane, if there is like a changes on, on the impedance, that will create some uh, reflections, and that will be noise to your signal, no? And another point, the transmission lane is going to work as an antenna, so the transmission lane will create some emissions and also will catch some signals that will be coming from the air, okay? So when you are like taking a flight, it's typically to hear that you need to turn off your devices because all of those can create some interferences, okay? So that's going to happen on your PCB. Your PCB will be acting as an antenna. If there is like something creating some emissions, those emissions will get into the signal, and those are going to be some noises, okay? So let's try to describe better how the signal will be affected because all the circumstances there on your environment, okay? The first example, we have a signal that is coming from the, from the transmitter, okay? The transmitter can be just a, a FPGA who is creating a, a data pattern, okay? So that signal, it's a, a digital pattern, okay? But the plot, let me try to mark this one. This one, no? This is a combination of zeros, zeros to ones, ones to zero, no? Low to high, high to low, different sequences of, of, of data that is just changing, no? Low to high, high to low, 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 high, low, high, no? So at the end, the platform, the, the, the oscilloscope, oscilloscope is building this waveform. The name of that signal is a eye diagram. The eye diagram is like placing all together all those sequences, okay? So the transmission lane is going to be acting as an active uh, circuit with inductance and capacitance effects. So how the signal is going to be affected? The signal is going to be affected by noises, by reductions on the on the voltage level, and when the signal gets to the destination, maybe the rise time and the and the fall time will be affected. The signal is not going to change in the correct time. And if you are like giving this instruction to activate this system, maybe the signal will get late. And the second part, the signal has several noise. And maybe you will be wondering if the data that has been arrived is a low or high value, okay? So as you can see, the eye get closed, no? What you are expecting when you are uh, transferring data is that the eye gets correctly open as much as possible. Because if the eye gets open, as in this case, no? It means that the receiver will identify the instructions correctly will translate the messages, will do the correct decodification of your signal. Okay. Okay, let's continue. Another effects. Okay. Let's let's try to think that maybe there is like a transmission a transmission lane, no? There on your PCB, there is a sequence of data that's uh, moving on, on to the or other direction, no? But at the end, the transmission lane is going to act as an antenna, okay? So it's not just a communication in between the people or they're on the lane inside the PCB. That lane will create some effects of crosstalk. What that means is sources of noises that will be sent by just emissions as an antenna, okay? That's gonna be crosstalk. So typically, uh, we need to do 
EMI testing to validate if there are some signals that should be coming from your device. It doesn't mean that your device doesn't have a, like an antenna. The circuit as itself can create some emissions. And those emissions will get in other of the devices around your circuit, no? I have a circuit on this, on this place, no? And maybe there is a communication in between the FPGA to another component between those two guys, but maybe those, that communication will create some interference to some others in another area, okay? That's why when you are using, uh, when you are doing EMI testing, you need to use a near field antenna to try to catch like a metal detector to try to detect from where the interference is coming. Okay, so with that, you can check to validate if this device or this other is creating those, those cross of those emissions. Okay, and, and finally, when there are some interconnections, okay, any type of interconnection. Also, inside the component, inside the, the PCB, is just a, a change in between the impedance, okay? So if, if the impedance changes, there would be some reflections. So let's try to, to describe this. Uh, that instrument is creating a pulse, okay? So the pulse gets on this uh, road, but when it finds those interconnections, there would be a part of the signal that will be reflected. That's what I was saying, no? Not the 100% of the signal will get into the destination, no. Maybe just 90%, 85%, but the other part will get reflected. So if we try to describe the eye diagram, this is the affection of the eye diagram, no? As you can see, there is like this uh, peaks, Okay, those ground transitions that can create some confusions to the receiver. The receiver will say, hey, is this a low level, a high level, no? A zero or a one? If the, if the voltage level of those small peaks gets higher, maybe it will be much, much more difficult to identify him. What, the, what the instruction, what, what the instruction is, okay? That's the point. So if there are any questions, please let me, okay? So if we try to describe the communication in between the modules, okay, inside a system, no? We used to call them as an embedded system, no? It could be in a washing machine or in a computer or inside the, the, the vehicle, no? At the end, there should be like a controller trying to do a connection to the different sub-modules, okay? In this example, we are doing this scenario, no? Uh, of this vehicle with the chassis, with the detectors of people in front of you or vehicles in front of you, the part of the info inter entertainment, the part of power train, the part of, the, the part of safety. At the end, there are like, Submodules, each of those with their own communication. For example, the power train. The power train is talking with CAN. CAN is going to be like the language, okay? The protocol used to do the communication in between the submodules inside that one, okay? For the chassis, the communication is going to occur with flex ray, okay? Um, but in between the modules, to talk with the, the, with the main computer, okay? The communication is gonna be through Ethernet, okay? What's the idea? Five years ago, 10 years ago, the communication in, inside the vehicle was with long cables, okay? And several cables, one for each communication. So now that, that we are talking to make the, the, the vehicles like much more efficient, uh, it means that you, we need to reduce the weight of the vehicle. So one part to, to try to make that possible is to make a simple connection between the modules and the solution is through Ethernet, okay? So through Ethernet, that channel can get 
more devices communicating co to do the communication on the same lane, okay? And we have an address, and we have the data, so we can say, I want to talk with the chassis model. And to the chassis model, do this, no? Each of the models has like an identifier and the data to be shared with them, okay? Just a single cable to do the connection in between, okay? And as you can see on this plot, let me try to make a zoom. There is a there are some trends, okay? For example, up to 2019, 2020, no? Flex ray, MOS can use to be the ones more useful, no? But nowadays we are changing to internet, no? And the reason for internet is also because it's helping us to transport more data with more speed. For example, the signals that are coming from the displays or maybe the driver assistant models like the radars inside the vehicle, okay? So a lot of information. So internet can be like a, a good solution, okay? I'm sorry for to do that, that, that change. So when you try to choose an oscilloscope, the oscilloscope has like different ways to, to select them, no? Maybe the quantity of channels, maybe the bandwidth, in the type of proofs and some others, okay? So what's the idea? The bandwidth. The bandwidth is like the frequency, the top of the frequency that the instrument can measure. As an example, if the instrument is 100 megs, it means that it's gonna act as a low uh, pass filter. So the, the frequency, the cut frequency is 100 megs. If you try to measure 200 megs, the instrument will, will not be capa capable to do that, okay? So typically, we try to capture the fundamental, the harmonic, and the fit harmonic. So the idea is that you need to capture like all the frequency range of the signal, okay? To try to reveal them, no? At the end, the platform, the oscilloscope, needs to visualize the signal as it comes. With, without some filtering, okay? So to do that, make sure to, to, to configure an oscilloscope with the correct bandwidth, okay? Second, uh, if you do, do not select the correct bandwidth, maybe you are adding some filtering, no? And the way to describe this is with this waveform, okay? So as you can see, it's the same signal, but it has been captured at 500 megs, two gigs and four gigs. It's the same signal, but the rise time is going to be affected when you are using an oscilloscope up to 500 megs. And the reason is because the oscilloscope is acting as a big filter, no? So the signal will be affected. And the idea is that the platform will show you the signal as it comes, no? With no modifications, okay? There are some, groups doing also some signal integrity validation. And that means that they need to measure the peak-to-peak -peak voltage and the rise time. And, and there are some limits. If the signal gets in a lower speed, maybe the signal will be losing that capability to be accepted. So maybe you are doing like a rejection of that component, but maybe the conflict is not because of the device. Maybe it's just because of the platform that you are using. Okay, then uh, try to do the adjustments for the bandwidth, for the quantity of channels. Also related will be the sample rate, okay? So the sample rate is also associated to, with the rise, as I mentioned previously. So the rise time needs to be two times higher as the uh, max frequency. So try to remember about, about Nyquist. So the idea is not just in the physical layer, also in the digital, on how do you di digitalize the signal to, to reveal them correctly, no? To, to avoid some conflicts because you are not capturing uh, correctly how, how the signal is changing, okay? And well, the memory, 
the oscilloscope then is a digitalizer. The digitalizer is like taking all the data, but you need to have enough memory to show that waveform that has been captured. No, you have like a picture with several pixels to describe like how the signal is changing. As much as the memory gets bigger, okay, then you can capture longer time. If you want to decode a signal, you need to have much more memory for what to capture instead of five seconds, 30 seconds, one minute or more. Or more. OK, so the memory that can be described as record length is how long can be your capture, no? And then if you want to decode a signal to be able to decode a, a longer capture, 20 seconds, 30 seconds or, or more, OK? Mm, OK, the oscilloscope will give you a description of the noises, OK? And there is like a gradient of the colors to, to do a description of the signal that looks with better color is that, is that signal that is like always active, okay? But if there are like some infrequent events, it means some noises, some affections to your signal, maybe the color is going to be degraded, lower color, or, or turning, depending on the oscilloscope, or moving to the to the blues. Instead of a red, a blue. Saying the red is like the more frequent event, and the and the one on blue is a infrequent signal that will come. In this example, you can see like a rise time, no? And you have like a something in, in before and after the main event, no? So the, the oscilloscope is saying, hey, you have a signal that is changing for, from a low level to a high level, but there are some events that should be in advance to the clock. So maybe the instruction is incorrectly uh, received by the, by, the, by the receiver, no? So take care of that, okay? This is another example. It's a clock signal, and there is like this, this waveform let me try to, to use the plot, okay? So for example, on this point, no? The one with a stronger color is the frequent event, but this one or this other, an attenuated color, it means that it's not as frequent as the other. So maybe that one is a conflict on your device. So to do like a troubleshooting, you try to activate this high speed mode on the oscilloscopes to try to capture those events that are eventually events that are not always present. Okay? Is it clear? Is there any question? Okay. What we try to measure is an embedded system. The embedded system, it should be an FPGA or a microprocessor, but at the end, we call them as an embedded system because there are like different submodules. It's not just a communication in between two individuals, no? No, no, no. There are several modules all around. So in this example, there should be like FPGA, talking with a display, or maybe talking with a memory, or with some inputs that those could be like sensors or buttons, instructions coming from someone or some devices, no? And the communication in between the models could be I4C, SPI, USB. Maybe there should be another one's wireless like a communication as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee. There are several devices doing communication in between. So the idea of the oscilloscope is that we need to identify how is the communication between the submodules, okay? I4C is coming with two signals, a clock and one more for that. Uh, there should be the SPI. The SPI has a clock and a slave, one for that uh, as an input and one to do the transmission, no, for channels. USB, just two signals. CAN, it's gonna be two signals, no? 
uh, one uh, differential signal, one uh, as a mirror to the other, okay? For two signals. Then the question is, at the end, the communication between the modules is going to work or not? Are there some noises that can affect the communication to the others? That's the reason why we need to use the oscilloscope. So the oscilloscope is going to be connected inside the PCB, okay? So to these, to these devices, okay, in between. And we have the quantity of channels to be measured. The oscilloscope can reach up to eight, eight analog channels, 16 digital channels, like the typical configuration, but there are some new platforms that can reach up to 64 channels, okay? So the oscilloscope will capture a signal like this one, a, a sequence of data, lows to highs, highs to lows, zeros, ones, several combinations, no? Then in a, in a digital, in a, in a protocol uh, communication, no? There should be a structure with a quantity of bits, maybe 20, eight, no? So the structure of this uh, communication maybe is one signal to de define that on this place will the communication start, and on this other that the communication will stop. 16 bits maybe, no? But the first three ones, no? It's like an identificator. And the next eight, the data. And the next others, another stop, okay? So maybe a user will need to count manually all those sequences to do that assignation. Or the platform by itself, the oscilloscope, can do that analysis, and the oscilloscope will decode the signal, okay? In this example, the signal in yellow is the clock, the one in blue is the data, okay? And then, take a look at this. There is a structure, a structure saying on this place, the communication start on green. On red, the communication will stop in red, no? And inside there, there is a communication with an address to read the data 50. No, address in location 50 to do a read, no? And then a data that is going to be taken with a 12, okay? So the question is, why the oscilloscope needs to decode? Because the oscilloscope is going to act in between the transmitter and the receiver the oscilloscope will be placed in between of them, okay? The, the, the oscilloscope will decode the signal and it will tell you if the noise affects the communication. If the oscilloscope identifies that the communication is bad, the instrument will give you some warnings. So there would be like uh, uh, red boxes saying, hey, there are communication in between, in some cases, I, I can detect all, but on this place, this guy is talking something that I do not understand. Then they can record the signal because maybe there are some noises, some maybe some changes on the on the value of the voltage that will create some confusion to on how to identify that data. Okay, so maybe the noise is coming because of a uh, physical. Uh, conflicts on this device, but if there are no noises, but they still we are facing those conflicts, no? Maybe it's just a, a conflict in the software. So maybe we just need to do some arrangements on, on the software as itself, okay? So on this signal, on the blue signal, there are some uh, low power uh, peaks, no? But those are not affecting the communication. Um, the communication is correctly detected, so even there are some noises, the qualification for that signal is an okay because the communication can be correctly identified, understood by the receiver. Okay, that, that's the, the conclusion for this. So I, I, I want to try to do some, some, uh, some measurements, okay? 
let me try to, to jump to another application. See if this one is working. No, I have a plan B. My main idea fails, but this is how the oscilloscope looks like. OK, so the first part. Yes, the, you can see the oscilloscope. OK, so the first part. Uh, let me try to close this. I'm going to call as a, an example. OK. For this, OK. This is the typical uh, representation of the oscilloscope on, on the screen. No, this is a capture of the oscilloscope. So the oscilloscope will, will show you how the signal is changing versus time, no? as we said at the beginning. It talks also about the noise. You can add some measurements. No, on this case, it's a square signal. It could be a clock. Or that noisy clock, no? And we captured the, that longer sequence of, of, of uh, voltage changes, no? So it's a long, long sequence of the, of the clock. But I'm doing like a, like a zoom in a certain area. So as you can see, I'm changing like the, how, how deep is my zoom, no? The oscilloscope already captured all this, but I'm doing a zoom just in a part, just to do an evaluation of how the signal is changing. Uh, when we add some, some measurements, so the oscilloscope will give you this alternative to measure in the amplitude, in the time domain. As an example, you can try to measure the data rate. If that's a data, we can add a data rate. Or just the rise time, the fall time, no? The amplitude measurements as a peak-to-peak -peak voltage, no? And some others. That's great. Second part, those measurements that are like on the at the right are like the instant measurements. But if you want, you can do some uh, multiple samples to try to create a mean measurement. No, how's the average? How are like the standard deviation to to associate better? No, uh, how the signal is. Uh, you can add another extras. For example, you can add how is the, the frequency response. You can add the maths. And to do the maths, you can add the basic measurements like a, like a zoom, a dot, no? Or it could be a fast Fourier transform to show like the frequency response. But that's like the first part. The second part, it's the signal, how to decode that signal, okay? So, as an example, let's try to start with a low speed signal, this one, 232. This type of signal has been designed by Bosch in the 60s. 60s okay? It, it, what, what, what the signal is sending is just an exa sequence. So it's going to be a nasty character, okay? So when you try to configure the, the, the signal decodification, you add this function, okay? So to decode the signal, no? Second, you will decide, A, hey, which is the type of the bus? It's an I2C, it's a 232, it's a USB, it's a LIN, it's a CAN, all depends on, no? There are some communication just for automotive apps. There are others for system embedded system. There are others for compute, for aerospace and defense, no? But here is like a, a big list of different decoders, no? Here we have a list. I want to try to move this to the low. Manchester. Manchester is the communication in between the, the controllers for the vehicles, no? The space wire, wire for, for uh, Milgo, no? DeFi. It's for the communication with the screens or monitors. Uh, once for audio, then several types, no? So you need to, to, to say to the, to the oscilloscope, hey, this is the type of the bus. This is the speed, if there are no clocks, okay? And um, which is the data rate? From which channel the signal is coming? In this case, the, the, the signal is coming from the reference one. 
and that's great. And second, how do you want to present the information in EXA or in an ASCII? This case, as an ASCII. So below the signal, I'm going to try to make this one bigger. OK, this is the signal that, that has been taken No. OK, and below the signal, no, the signal could be noisy or not. But below that, sig that signal is what that means. In that specific area means a D character. OK, if we mo move to the other one, no, as this one, this is an E and this is a K. These guys are trying to decode the signal, OK? Below the signal, you can see like how, how the signal looks like, no? OK, as this, OK? So below the signal. And you will capture like all the sequence to see all the communication in between. The reason why we show like this uh, table is to determine at, we, at which time each of the characters arrive it, no? So you can see like all the sequence that it's saying electronics, no? Electronics enabling innovation, no? So you need to have like good memory to capture a long, long sequence. Then you activate the decoder and the oscilloscope will describe like all the content of that information. The oscilloscope is not just to, to act as a translator. The oscilloscope also can try to identify some, identify something, okay? As an example, maybe you are sending a, a message to that other device. That other device is a uh, address 5.0, no? So you can say, hey, when you find a communication with the 5.0, Please stop your acquisition because I want to, to, to take a look on what happened before and after after that 50. OK, so that's going to be like a trigger. So the oscilloscope will be doing all these decodification inside them there, inside that platform. When the platform detects the data that you want to show, the oscilloscope will stop and will present the information. So you can be like saying, hey, I don't want to see anything, at least that some failure occurs. So you can act saying, hey, OK, I want to do a configuration of a trigger. The trigger is like a condition that if some something gets detected on that place, capture it and show me that info. No? So if you detect a failure, please advise. Please let me know and show me that, that capture. OK? Another example, this is a, a old uh, protocol. Let's try to, to move to another that is really used, no? Several applications, the I2C, no? So this other, the, the difference in between the, the previous one, the previous one was just in one channel, okay? But this other has a content in two signals, one to transport the clock and the other one to, to transport all the data. OK, so again, you need to go to the system configuration. Then you will need to do what type of protocol it is. This is an I2C. Then the instrument will ask you what the, what the instrument needs to, 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 to be able to decode the signal. So the question is from which channel the signal is coming. OK. So the clock is coming from channel one, is the one in yellow, OK? The data is coming from the channel two, the one on blue, OK? And the 2.5 volts is like the voltage level when the signal do a transformation from high to the low, OK? That's the point. So the instrument will do then this signal decode. And below the signal is, OK, I, I'm detecting. I'm detecting the low, the, 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 when the package gets started, when the communication gets get finished, 
and then the address, the data, all the data, no? So you have like all the sequence for all the communication in between. But take a look on this. Uh, there are like some areas with good definition, no? Good colors. But here we have, I, I, I know how to read this, but there are like a, a block with a red alert saying something is wrong on this position, okay? Or on this other, or on this other. So I can try to make like a zoom that is like a red flag. And as a red flag, it's like a warning saying, hey, I'm doing the decodification. So the transmitter is talking to the receiver. I'm in between. And on that communication, something is failing. So take a look on this. It could be noise on the physical layer, or maybe it could be on the software. So the instrument is saying, okay, take a look on this. When I take a look on the on the play, on the waveform, I don't see like some noises that can create like a, a confusion to detect if the value is a high or a low. So that's not a big noise, okay? So maybe then it's a conflict on the on the on the firmware or the software that is trying to control like all this this system, no? So if we take a look on the data. There on the right, okay. There are like different columns saying, okay, at this time the data occurs, at that time is the address, is the data, but there is one column, and that one column is about the, the errors. So if the instrument detects an error, we'll try to tell you what's the reason for that one. And on this case, it's saying, hey, this is a unexpected non acknowledged. That means the transmitter was trying to reach some other, okay? And, and, and the transmitter was saying, hey, I want to do a communication with you. Can you hear me? And the other never answered to this request to, to start the communication. So that other guy never answered. Then I need to replicate, hey, can you hear me? Again, hey, can you hear me? So the software, on this case, the oscilloscope is doing the decodification and it's saying, hey, the model is trying to do the communication, but the other is not doing a reply. Then the communication can, can start the game, no? So the conflict is not because of noises. The conflict is because the other never answered to the, to the transmitter, no? So this is how the platform will help you, not just to, to plot a waveform. It's also to get there, to analyze the data, and to try to identify if there is like a conflict on the hardware or at the software level. That's the idea of the oscilloscope. So the oscilloscope typically is the quantity of channels, the bandwidth, but at the end is, okay, what's the type of signal? Which is the frequency that you want to capture? Make sure to have like the correct bandwidth to do the construction of the waveform as it really, uh, 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 as much as the signal on the reality is, no? But in the second part is, okay, do you want to just to, to capture like the, how the signal looks like, or do you want to analyze the content of the data, no? So if you want to analyze the content, then is which is the type of the bus, I can do the decodification and I can give you like the details about the errors, if those are for hardware or related to software, no? So the oscilloscope is not just to show the waveform, it's more to analyze all the data inside that, inside, inside the system, no? So with this, I, I want to finish my, my, my uh, presentation, but I want to, to add some minutes in case that you guys have, have some questions or to bring some other cases, okay? So I want to hear you. Is there any question there? Take a look at this. Uh, this is an example of a USB, okay? This, uh, you, you can connect your, your oscilloscope to the USB, the USB cable, 
it comes with the with the power and the data. The data is uh, in the two lanes in the in the middle of the cable. Okay. Look at this. How how the signal is changing versus the previous one. The previous one are like lower speed. Okay. But in this case, uh, it's high speed in a longer sequence of data. A lot of information there. Okay, a lot of information there. Look at this. Look like the size of this waveform. No, I didn't describe previously, but the communication in in a serial bus is as a as or communication. Those are words. So it's like a package and then a deadline. Uh, like a pause in between, no, the, the, the message like, like this. Let me try to open one. Let me try to open this kind. So it's message a uh, uh, time in between the next one, no? So there is always like a word and, and a time in between, a, a complete word and, and then the other. So you need to capture like all the sequence, otherwise the oscilloscope cannot detect like all the all the phrase no so it's like uh you are you are trying to capture like a, a long word but if you just capture a, a just a character then you cannot understand like all the all the word no so it's, it's the same on, on on the decoder you need to capture like the a big sequence no with all the words and that's the reason why you need more memory, no? Uh, another example in the serial bosses, an item, could be an item. In an internet, we are talking with the identifier of the device. So we are talking with the other one who is like doing a communication with internet. Then there is an a MAC address the MAC address is the identifier to the other, okay? Maybe in the other protocols as SCAN or I2C, there should be like a identifier, like a two characters or three characters. But in this case, there should be a lot of them. That's why we are using a MAC address. So there should be several devices and that's why the, the, the identifier is like longer as the previous one that I that I showed, no? So just to, to add one, one more, no? Mm -hmm. One for Milgo, no? Uh, so take a look on the, on the table that is showing like the structure of the, of the protocol, no? In this case, it has like a type of the content, data, command, status, no? The other is, which is like the remote terminal address. See, is, see if this guy is doing a, acting as a transmitter or receiver, the sub address, mode code. So the instrument can decode the signal as it comes. And you can trigger instead of a rising edge or falling edge, also in the content, you can say, hey, if you find that the communication goes to the AT, let me know. And the instrument is doing the analysis, doing the analysis, and when it detects that the communication is to the AT, the instrument will stop the acquisition there to show you like all, all the activity, no? So it's about the memory, the signal analysis, and you can detect what you need. It's not just a translator. If they, if the oscilloscope hear the key instruction, the, the oscilloscope will stop it. We show you that in just to do the analysis. If your system is work, to, to validate if your system is working correctly or not. No. So when I finish like an analysis, I can go to the to the system to say, hey, I want to save my results as a screen capture, as an away form, and there are like a new Ways, ways to save the, your data. So it could be a PDF report there on the oscilloscope and one more, a session. So the session is like my system configuration, better say, is how, how 
did I configure the system in the acquisition that I that I took? Okay, so I can share that that file with some others. No, uh, maybe someone that will assist us. No, and the platform has like a toolkit, so you can do this remote connection. So some other remotely can get the access to the platform, not just to see like what the instrument is showing, also to do a system control, to control the data, the time per division, the water per division, those things, no? So at the end, the, the evolution of the oscilloscope is, it's, it's big, no? There are like new tools inside the platform, okay? Okay, thank you guys. So I just want to, to to hear you if there are any questions or from the ones that are like they're connected. So, so thank you. A question or no questions? No questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the time. Yeah.